Today's show is very different in the fact that I am not editing this. The topic is how do you do a solo show? And what I'm going to do a little bit like a director's cut is I have a script that I've written to keep myself somewhat on topic, but I often go off script. So when I go off script, you'll hear me a little more in the one headphone, kind of like I'm doing now. This is the director cut. So if you're a podcaster who has been thinking about doing a solo show, but you just don't feel comfortable, you're going to pick up some tips and I'm going to try to answer the question, why do I sound so comfortable behind the microphone? Hit it, ladies. The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. Podcasting since 2005, I am your award-winning Hall of Fame podcast coach, Dave Jackson, thanking you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the show, here's what we do. I help you plan launch and grow your podcast if you want to monetize we can do that too it's all there school of podcasting.com slash listener and when you use that link the whole slash listener that's right you save on either a monthly or yearly subscription and today's show is going to be a little different because i'm not going to edit and here's why i had a member of the School of Podcasting who wanted to know, how how did you do your solo shows? And it turns out he's not the only one. And while everyone has their own style and strategies, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you how I do mine, and it may not work for you at all. We're all absolutely, completely unique. So right now, I am typing these words. Actually, right now, I'm reading these words. And I'll explain why my voice changed here while I do that. But right now I'm typing these words and I'm throwing out all the punctuation. So let's get to that question and let's explain that now. Why, why does my voice sound weird now? Uh, because when I do things off script, I'm going to put my voice on a second track with the bass taken off. So it'll sound different. So now let's go back to me kind of using a script and I'll have uh, maybe I'll have a video of this because I have the script, but I'm throwing in a bunch of stuff. And when I go off script, I will put it on that separate track so you can hear when I'm on script and when I'm off. But here's the thing. Keep in mind, this is how I do it. You might do it completely different. So let's answer that question, Dave. How do you record a solo show? Well, first things first, right now I'm using a Shure SM7B that's going into the Rodecaster Pro. Now, if it was a few weeks from now, it would be going into the Rodecaster Duo, which is like a little baby Rodecaster, and it will take up much less of my desk. And so that's what's going on. But realize this could be a Samson Q2U going directly into Hindenburg. It's really not the tech, but that's how I do it. I pretty much like the sound of my own voice. So, like I said, if I mess up, how I fix that is I stop the flub and I go in and I will actually, if you haven't listened to the show before, at the very end of the show, I have bloopers where I've flubbed up and that is where typically my mouth doesn't work. Now, I then go in and I find a good spot to do what people in the music industry call a punch in. So I'm listening to, to me and I'm like, okay, there's a good spot where I can jump in and it won't kind of sound like I've punched in. And so what I'm doing is I'm listening to me as I'm hitting playback and I'm waiting to hit the record button so I can pick up. And this is similar. Think of this as if you're singing along with a song, but it's me talking along with me because I don't want the original one to sound like this and then have me come in like this. That's, that's not going to work, but it's me talking in the same tone and I press record and I keep on going. Now, later when I get to a good stopping spot, I go back and I make sure that punch in sounds natural. And if it's not completely obvious, I'll leave it in because here's the thing to keep in mind. Remember, these edits are flying by at the speed of talk. And while you are analyzing every single word, of course, you are, we're we're hyper-focused on this. We're hyper-focused on every word and on every breath. 
your audience isn't. They already made it past your edit and didn't even notice it. So this is where and I hear somebody go, hey, I've been, you know, it takes me 27 days to edit a 15 minute podcast. I'm like, yeah, you're not uh, listening through the ears of a listener. You're listening through the ears of a podcaster. So keep that in mind. And like I said, I'm going to do this unedited today. So any mistakes, I'm going to leave them in. And you'll notice already I've gone off script a lot. I'm off script right now, letting you know that I'm off script. So I use this as kind of a way to steer me in the right direction, keep me focused on what the heck I'm trying to say. And that's why I'm kind of breaking the fourth wall here. And so I do, like I'm doing now, I add words that aren't in the script. And so the one thing you should know is this script that I'm using right now, it took me 46 minutes to write. And you might say, who, wow, who's got time for that? And I'm like, yeah, guess what? I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of when we get done. And that will be hopefully editing. Okay. So I'm typing this into a Google doc as if you're sitting across from me from the desk, it's like, you're, you're just right there. And really I'm, I'm picturing Ken Blanchard. I'm picturing Kim Kragy. I'm picturing Mark. My buddy Mark, uh, Mark's got a, Mark, stay tuned. There's some really bad Dave music coming. So the when I hear people say, how do you do a solo show? That's how I do that. So first things out, I, I have to figure out what I'm going to say. I just spent 46 minutes figuring out what I want to say. It was kind of a brain dump, but by a brain dump, what I mean is I'm throwing out punctuation because we don't write like we talk, we don't talk like we write. And so I just wrote this the way I talk. And then I kind of look up and occasionally see where I'm at. And then I throw in some things off script and you'll be hearing those. And the other thing you need to remember is sometimes, A, it's not live. And by that, I mean, it's not the radio. And the other thing When it comes to it's not live, we think of it like the radio, which means people are listening and they're not. They're not listening. And that means the only way that you can sound stupid is if you record something where you sound stupid and then later hit publish. And if you listen to it and go, I don't know, I'm not really uh, super bubbly or I'm not, maybe you just don't like it, whatever it is, well, then don't publish it. And you can do it again and do it again. I had Mark Hazara from uh, Lessons from the the Cockpit, and we were working on his first episode, and he recorded it, I think, three times. And on the third time, he's like, yeah, I, I like that one. So keep in mind, the nice thing about a solo show is there's no schedule conflicts. Like if I mess up, I can just hit record again. In fact, right now, I have no backup. I'm recording directly into Hindenburg. And if for some reason the power goes out or God forbid Hindenburg eats the file, which I've never had happen for the record. I love Hindenburg. But if for some reason I lose that, it's no big deal to re-record it because, well, I'm right here. So keep that in mind. It's not live. Meanwhile, back on the script, I'm amazed When people think that I just sit down in front of a microphone and just talk for 20 minutes and then I mix in some music and things like that and I'm done and I'm here to tell you nothing could be further from the truth. I mess up a lot and I'm wondering today if this is not going to be the typical kind of thing because I really made sure I knew what I was saying today. I've had episodes in the past where all I had was bullet points. I didn't write out the blog post. And I kind of cringe because I am all over the place when I do that. So one of the things you can do to kind of relax is to just take the pressure off. Tell yourself, look, I'm going to record this one. It's just a practice. I just want to make sure the equipment's going to work. And then again, talk to the other person on the other side of the desk. You should, in theory, be excited about what you're talking about. And that's going to help your voice inflection. Like right now, I'm excited to talk to you about how to do a solo show. And solo shows can be so important because it's a way 
for your audience to get to know you. And it is a skill and it takes practice. And especially if you're reading it off a script. Uh, in fact, let's, let's repeat that, shall we? If you're going to read it off a script and you've written it the way you talk, it's still going to take some practice. Like when I talk normally, did you hear me do that? I just said, and it's written in the way you talk, pause, it's still going to take some practice. That's a presentation thing. I don't know that I would do that if you were actually sitting across the desk from me. And that is one of the things that doing a solo show, it is a little bit of a performance, right? It's, it's, it's not like we're doing Shakespeare and you have to, you know, to be or not to be, right? But, you know, keep in mind, it's not live. And you can keep the good parts and any bad parts, you just flub. And so if we're learning nothing from this, it's that Dave takes lots of tangents. My ADD is off the chart. Anyway, I tried, uh, for the record, let's take a tangent, shall we? I, uh, at one point, tried anti-ADD, HD, KM, whatever letter you want to throw at me, and it turned me into a zombie. And for me, I don't know, I'm getting by without it. Here's something to keep in mind in terms of people sounding perfect on the Netflix show. It's David Letterman. It's the one where it's uh, my next guest needs no introduction. He interviewed Billie Eilish. It's a really good interview. You should uh, check that out. Even if you don't like Billie Eilish, because she talks about here's somebody who's won like, I don't know, seven Grammys by the time she was under 20. So she's really talented and has tons of imposter syndrome. But David Letterman is in the studio with her and her producer, which happens to be her brother. And he's showing a vocal track and it's a million pieces where they've actually taken, like she'll sing the song and she's like, Oh, I like the way I say the word love there or the, or together or whatever it is. And so what you think is this great vocal performance and it is, it just wasn't done live. Another example, David, Lee Roth on the the Joe Rogan show was talking about Eddie Van Halen, man. And uh, he said he would record multiple solos for the song. And then he would take bits and pieces. Oh, I like the way I started this one here. And then over here, I like this riff. And I, oh, let's take the, from the 17th solo, let's take that. And then what he would end up having to do is he'd end up with this brilliant guitar solo and then have to figure out now, how am I going to play that live? My point being again, it's okay to edit. You can take the best pieces parts and put them out there. Now I realize he said, taking another tangent, if you're worried about, well, what about being live then? Well, you're you, you're you, and you're going to be you. So you're going to sound like you. It's not like we're making a false version of you. We're taking the best version of you. It's not like we're falsifying this. This isn't some sort of weird AI tool where we're, having the voice come in, you're being you and we're taking the best version of you. And for the record, that's the way it's been done in the music business forever. If you watch Chris Rock, if you watch, uh, except for his last one on Netflix, which by the way, had what a mistake in it. Chris's Chris Rock's last net Netflix special had a mistake in it. I think they went back and fixed it, but it was live. Normally Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, some of my favorite comedians, They will record multiple nights in the same theater and then take the best parts. This is not new. We're not all perfect. And we put the best parts together. So keep that in mind. Take the pressure off. You can re-record the flubs. And the beauty of doing a solo, again, there's no scheduling issues. And wherever you mess up, you go back a little bit further, figure out where to start and record and kind of punch in again. And then uh, afterwards, again, pull out the mistake replace it with a good read. And what I usually do is I listen to it and say, does this sound edited? So if for some reason I'm talking like this and then all of a sudden I'm talking, no, or even anything that just sounds weird, I don't want it to sound edited. I want it to sound natural. And if it does sound natural, then good. Keep moving. It's not live. And you just fixed your mistake. It's really, some people think, oh, I have to go back and re-record from the beginning. No, 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 no. Let's just go back and fix the flub. 
And so as I was researching this particular episode, one of the questions I saw was, where do you get the ideas for solo shows? So for example, Paul, and I'm going to probably butcher your name, McGilvery, wanted to know in regards to a solo show, where to get content. That was from a podcast movement Facebook group. Uh, when I was in Reddit, I went there into the like r slash podcasting group and I typed in solo episodes. There were easily over 10 posts about doing a solo episode. And in the podcast movement Facebook group, there were quite a few people asking about how to do a solo show, mainly about like, how do I do it? And Allie, I, I believe her like screen name is Allie Please in Reddit. She asked, do you think a podcast that goes against the most popular podcast format, I guess she means interviews, can truly gain an audience? Hasn't hit, hasn't uh, hurt Bill Burr or John, well, John Lee Dumas does interviews, but there are plenty of solo podcasts that are doing great. One other thing about a solo show is Dan, I'm going to say Gassane in Facebook mentioned that he was recording his solo show in the car and crashed and no, he was not kidding. And I believe that is the definition of distracted driving. So if you're like, I don't have any time to podcast, I have to do it in my car. No, no, just no. And by that, I mean, no, quit doing that. And so where do I get ideas for solo shows? I am in Facebook groups. This came from Facebook along with the member of the School of Podcasting. I saw it in the Grow the Show Facebook group. There are all sorts of places. So I go to Facebook groups. I go to Reddit. I go to Quora occasionally. I'm on Twitter. Anybody knows, can we take a tangent for a second? With Twitter, if you haven't heard, Pat Sajak from Wheel of Fortune, a very, very, very popular show here in the States. He's been doing it for like, I don't know, back in the Eisenhower days or something like that. And uh, when he announced he was retiring from Wheel of Fortune, leaving poor Vanna White and her millions uh, he announced it on Twitter. So as much as people want to go, Twitter's just a cesspool and man, you, you know, apparently it's not. Apparently there's still people on Twitter. I'm just saying, just for the record. But uh, I, when I go to these Facebook groups and I go to Reddit and I go to Quora, these are places I primarily go to do what? Promote my stuff and go, come listen to my show. No, I go there to listen. The first step of having valuable words that come out of your mouth is to have valuable insights go into your brain. Let's say that one more time, shall we? The first step of having valuable words come out of your mouth is to have valuable insights go into your brain. So how do you know what to talk about? Go hang out with your potential audience and see what they're talking about. Now, right now, just to let you know what I'm doing, I'm looking at my script. I go up and I'm at 18 minutes. So when we come back, which means we're going to a, uh, a commercial right now where I'm going to talk about the school of podcasting, we're going to answer the question, do you need a solo podcast? And there may be a reason that I'm more comfortable behind a microphone than you are. So I pause here and later using lips and pro I will insert the ad. And so in theory, they've just heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to pick up right there at the bottom of the page. So let's answer that question. Do I need to do a solo podcast, Dave? Because I really don't want to. And I think of my buddy, Jim Collison. He is my co-host on Ask the Podcast Coach. And Jim really does not want to do a solo show. And you know what? You don't have to. You don't have to. It's your show. This means you don't have to put out an episode where, you know, the guest is crappy. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do solo shows. You don't have to do interview shows. You don't have to do narrative shows. Again, it is your show. Do the show that you want to listen to is how I recommend some people, because a lot of times you are your target audience. And you're going to notice going forward that the interviews I do maybe using the narrative style. That's kind of, uh, some people call it NPR, but that's where you play clips of your guest that you've interviewed, and then you kind of inject you 
in between the clips to help steer the story. Or what I usually do is I insert me to emphasize a point. And I've been doing that since 2005. I just interrupt my own interviews, but now it's called narrative style. And from what I found and Natalie Ekdahl from Biz Chicks, I love Natalie. Uh, Biz Chicks, by the way, spelled with an X. So B-I-Z-C-H-I-X. She said it best. I've, I quote this a lot and it dawned on me. I don't know that I've really given uh, attribution to Natalie, but she said, interviews grow your network and solo shows grow your influence. And I think I'm adding on to this now. I think narrative style shows tend to resonate a little more with your audience. And that's why I want to do more of them. I get more randoms. Hey, Dave, that was a good episode when I've done a narrative style podcast. And I was like, that's funny. My audience seems to like those more. Now, keep in mind, some people may not like solo shows. Some people may not like interviews. Do what you want. It's your show. And if you're worried about boring people because you feel like, oh, I'm just rambling on and on, then play some transmit. Uh, uh, there we go. There's a, there's a phone. That's what it sounds like when Dave messes up. All right, we're going to go now. What I would normally do is I would stop here and I would just go back to the line if you're worried about boring people. And I would fix that. Now, since we're in the middle of we're, we're off the record now, I'm going to take a sip of water. Because my, uh, my voice is getting a little rough. All right, you ready? And I'm not editing this out. That's so weird. Because normally I would hit stop go back to where it says it's your show. That's where I would stop and start here, but I'm, I'm leaving this in today. So there you go. That's what it sounds like. That's a normal, Hey, Dave's mouth didn't work kind of a mistake. All right. And you've also probably noticed that I am a lot off the script here because I'm, I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of you listening to this. All right, Dave, get back on script. Would you? So if you're war, now there's another one. All right. Take three. So look, if, if you're worried about boring people because you feel, oh, I've been rambling on, then play some transition music when you jump from one topic to the next. My buddy David Hooper over at Big Podcast, he does a show with multiple topics, and he usually picks a different sound. And this goes back to the days of uh, when you used to listen. I would listen to an audio book on like a, an LP, a vinyl and it would be like, bring, turn the page. And Dave remembers that, and he's doing that. I usually play music, but it can be whatever you want. Again, it's your show. But when you have some sort of transition, it gives your audience, like their brain gets to take a break. And it also signals, hey, I know we were talking about where to get ideas. We've moved on now. Now we're talking about, do I need to do a solo show? And... You know, if you're boring, sh sure, then, you know, uh, uh, see, there's a mess up. I went back to the script and I, uh, because I'm not really reading this again, I'm using it as a guide. So um, we're going to go back and pick up with this gives the audience a brain break. So when you play that transition, it gives your audience a, a brain, their brain and see, there's a, a mess up that I normally would have left in. I just said a brain, their brain. Normally, I would just breeze over that because, again, your audience is listening at the speed of talk. And they're not going to notice that you said a brain, their brain. Who cares? It's how people talk. But let's try it again, shall we? So when you play a transition, it gives the audience, their brain kind of takes a break. It's like, ah, he quit talking for a second. And it signals that, hey, we're moving on. Now, I realize that some people... When they hear, give your audience a chance to take a break, they're going to go, hey, wait, but they might press stop. Well, yeah. And if you're boring, sure. But also keep in mind, yeah, they could press stop because I don't know, maybe they got to, they have to go use the loo or maybe they're going into a store and they're not going to listen to podcasts while they're in the store. Maybe they're at uh, a fast food joint. They're going through the fast food line and they're going to press stop there because it's a good place to press stop. And I'll press play because what you said before they press stop was holding their attention. They're going to press play because they want more. So I realized that. Don't obsess over that. We can always come up for with a reason to not do something. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to do 
transitions because it might signal people to stop. You can always come up with a reason to not do something. And just keep in mind, you can't please everyone. There is no such thing as a perfect podcast. There just isn't. Do the one you like. Do the one that your audience is like, hey, do more of that. Now, there is potentially, I was thinking about this. There, there's potentially a reason why I may be a little more comfortable behind a microphone than you are. And it dawned on me, and I was like, duh. And so let me play a clip of me when I was six years old. This is me with Grandma Audrey. We were playing radio, uh, W-H-O-M-E, and she's interviewing me. And this is where I'll insert the clip later. The Jackson. And we're broadcasting this afternoon, and David has granted us an interview. How old are you this year, David? Six. What are the subjects that you like to study best? I want to study. What subjects do you like? What lessons do you like best? Recess. Recess is your favorite subject? That's a good one. So I've been playing in audio a very, very long time. I went back and listened to some of the first episodes of the School of Podcasting. And while my voice is a little higher, hey, this is Dave from the School of Podcasting. It wasn't really painful. It wasn't like I was like, ugh. I listened to some music. I'll talk about that in a second. That was painful. But were there things I would change in regards to sounding like I was talking to someone across the desk? And I was like, you know what? That's really not that bad. I sound very conversational like I'm talking to you because I was. Sure, it was 18 years ago, but I knew how to talk to my invisible friend across the desk. And part of that might be because growing up, I am the baby of the family, and my older brother and my older sister had friends in the neighborhood. I did not. I had to drive my bike to my cousin's house to hang out with him. But there were many times I was just basically... I was going to say playing with myself, but that doesn't sound right. But I was amusing myself. Shall we say that? So I believe another thing is uh, due to me being a musician. Now, when I was little, my dad was into electronics, even though he ended up being a, a long distance truck driver. And I would go into his workbench area and he had all sorts of uh, tube testers and all sorts of stuff. And I found a bunch of old stuff there that was broken waiting for him to fix it when he would get off the road, which never happened. And so I was playing with reel to reel recorders. I was probably somewhere around 10 ish, right? When you're in that little boy phase and you just want to get into everything, I would do multi track recording in the bathroom. I wish I could find these. There's a great rendition of me singing yesterday by the Beatles with two cassette decks. I would go into the bathroom, I'd hit record yesterday, right? And then I would take the second cassette deck, I would hit play on the first one and sing the harmony. And of course you're in the bathroom because it's got those great reverb uh, acoustics. So I've been playing with audio. I played in bands when I was 15. I played in bars when I was 16. I'm a guitar player. And in my early 20s, I wrote and recorded my own music uh, where I specialized in playing all the parts so I was the, I would program a drum machine, I'd play the bass and everything else. But the other thing I was really good at it is I wrote music that I could never sing. It's not my time, but that's all. It's not my and so that's where I will put in a clip of me sounding really, really, really bad. Now let's let's pull back the curtain here. Why did I just play? a clip of me sounding bad. It's kind of vulnerable. It's actually pretty funny in a way. And it's also from my buddy, Mark Johansson in Florida, who will probably like somewhere in his car, put up the little horn signs on his hand. Like, yeah, Dave is rocking out. So I'm thinking of Mark as I record this as well. And I think he'll probably get a chuckle out of that. So meanwhile, I keep in mind that when I speak in public, I spoke in public today, I spoke at my church, my hands turn absolutely white and they get kind of cold every time before I speak in public. And I speak in public all the time. I made a living for decades teaching in the corporate world. I'm used to doing presentations and maybe that's another reason why 
I am comfortable behind the mic. I've done presentations for decades. And so that might be part of it. Uh, I'm used to presenting material. I just said that. So we're going to cut. I Normally, I would cut that out. I just repeated myself. I'm looking at my script. Oh, here's another thing. So I'm going to just, I'm going to go back and re-record this whole thing here. And here's what you might not know. When I present at, say, Podcast Movement in Denver, my hands are going to turn absolutely white and they're going to get very cold. That is something that happens five minutes before I get on stage. And that's just something that happens. But I have been speaking in public for decades. I taught in the corporate world. I would do a presentation five days a week. And then I even thought about this. I used to journal. I still journal. uh, And I started that when I was probably 11. So just shaping my own thoughts, even though nobody's ever going to read my journal till after I'm dead, they're going to go, man, that guy was weird. But I've been journaling. I've been forming my thoughts for, you know, decades now. Uh, In junior high, I discovered that if I could make people laugh, they were much less likely to punch me in the hall when they walked by. So I was like, Hey, I should be like, I should figure out how to be funny. And this is where I was really just blessed with a mom that was super funny. She was so awesome. And the other thing is she supported me in everything I did. She bought me a drum set when I was like five, uh, which who buys a five-year-old a drum set? Are you nuts? And it was a total toy thing, and I didn't take to the drums. But when I was 12, she bought me an auto harp, which I still have somewhere. So how do I sound so relaxed on the microphone? Well, I guess because I've been a content creator for years, at least for what appears to be most of my life. And I've always done the best with what I have. And this sounds kind of like a weird, humble brag, but it is, you know, we're here to be authentic and true today. I went and looked, I've done about a thousand solo shows and it's practice. So how do you do a solo show? Well, for me, I write out a blog post to kind of help me stay rooted on where I want to go. And as you've listened to this, you'll see where I went off script a lot. And so that's the first thing I have to figure out what I'm going to say. Cause can you only imagine how I would be if I didn't have some sort of script in front of me, I'd, I'd be all over the place. And I did that a couple episodes ago and uh, I wish I could remember the episode, but it was, I cringe when I listen to it. I'm almost going to re-record it. I might uh, in the bloopers, I'll go look that up. I didn't look it up now. Great show prep, Dave. So a figure out what you want to say and then be relax. Just relax. Quit thinking about the The audience. audience. And later I'm going to add reverb to that. Uh, And see again, this would be edited out. Relax. Remember it's not live. Because at this point, I'm at the bottom of my page with my three bullet points. So figure out what you want to say. Relax. It's not live. Try to add a little voice inflection. Because when you're just reading it, number one, when you read it, you're tempted to read because you know what the next word is going to say. So you might read it very fast and then people can't keep up, especially if they're listening at 1.5 speed. Sorry about that. Where when you're actually coming up with your words, You have to let your brain figure that out. So relax, maybe slow down a little bit, but don't slow down so much that the audience is waiting for the next word. So figure out what you're going to say, relax, and then practice. I know my buddy, I mentioned him before, David Hooper, bigpodcast.com. He talks about how he just reads stuff. He'll just pick up, I don't know, a shampoo bottle and read it to see if he can read it without flubbing up. Uh, I know I, it sounds weird when I make my breakfast. If I'm feeling a little weird or boring, I live by myself. So I got nobody to look weird in front of, and I'll just turn it into a cooking show. I'll be, I'll pretend I'm uh, Jamie Oliver and be like, all right, today we're going to be doing the Hamilton beach egg cooker. We're going to get two eggs out of the refrigerator There it is now, a little breaky, breaky. I don't know. I'm just, I'm narrating my life and I'm doing it. And sometimes I actually make myself laugh. So I'm, again, making content for practice 
for fun. And that way, when I'm back on the mic, and this doesn't mean, you know, you have to go narrate your, your drive to work. All right, I'm going to take 77 to 261. Here he goes. And the left turn. It just, again, the last thing I should probably say, I've told you how I do mine. This may not work for you, but you could try it and then say, hey, and by the way, notice the tone of my voice now. This is my wrapping it up voice. So this might not work for you, but you might try it and go, ooh, you know what? I liked this part of it, the whole writing it out thing, but I I don't like reading it off a script because it sounds like I'm reading it off a script. Maybe I will just boil this down to bullet points and riff on the bullet points. That's normally what I do. Today, I kind of riffed on the the page here, my Google Doc. And I am going to turn that into a video so you can see exactly how I did this. But in the end, figure out what works best for you and realize that 10 years from now, you might go, ooh, what if I did this? What if I did that? Your podcast is a recipe. It's not a statue. Do what you like, figure out what your audience wants and give it to them and wear those mesh doing stuff you like while giving your audience what they want. That's where you want to live. All right. So you just heard some dynamic stuff. This is where I do my, my wrap up thing. So here is my wrap up thing. Now here, the fun thing about this one, there's no script. This is me completely unscripted, which usually means it's going to be a train wreck. You ready? Here we go. All right. So if you've learned nothing today, you've learned that you need to edit because the story of me with a five-year-old drum set wasn't needed. The story of me and ADD medicine wasn't needed. There are a bunch of things in here I normally would have cut out. Now, granted, I realize as I've done this now, what I'm doing is I'm taking paragraphs of a script I've written and I'm using it like a bullet point because I'm so much off script, but I'm adding stories that maybe instead of typing the whole story out, I use a paragraph to mention this and I'm like, oh, and then I do this and I throw on funny voices or things of that nature. But if you're new to the show, it's normally not this ping pongy kind of format. I just did this today to show what it's like when you don't edit. So if you're like, man, this was all over the place. Yeah, I didn't edit it. That's the whole point. Now, if you want to learn how to edit, if you want to learn how to make a great podcast, I would love to help you. Schoolofpodcasting.com slash listener will save you on either a monthly or yearly subscription. And of course, that comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And, but wait, there's more unlimited. Yep, that's not a typo. Unlimited one-on-one consulting. Check it out again schoolofpodcasting.com slash listener. Until next week, take care. God bless. Class is dismissed. Oh, no. Ed- the one I really wanted to edit is somewhere back there. I said, I was talking about the gear and I said, I like the sound of my voice which is pretty much every spouse of a podcaster is probably saying, ah, he just loves the sound of his voice. And then, of course, there was this one, which was wrong. And you can keep the good parts, and any bad parts, you just flub. Which, of course, is a flub, because what I meant to say was, and the bad parts, you can re-record. Yeah. Yeah.